When did you and Fredo get really tight? Around the time when we were, like, me and Fredo got tight, like, we always, like, ever since we first met, we started getting tight low-key, because me and Keith stopped really being around each other. The more success we got, we stopped really hanging with each other kind of thing. It was kind of thing like that, so me and Fredo always kind of, like, we stayed, we had a career together and everything, so we kind of got tight. Like I said, right, right off the net, you know what I'm saying? Because like, once me and Keith stopped really being around each other a like, lot, me and Fredo really built a uh, closer bond. Like I say, me and him started doing, we started going on tour, not tour, but like we'll start going to each other's shows. You know what I'm saying? We started doing more music with each other. Just started just doing a lot together, you know what I'm saying? People come to Chicago, we'll go, you know what I'm saying? Go see other rappers and other artists that come in the city just to support. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know what I'm saying? Welcome them to the city. So we used to do a lot of little shit like that together that Keith wanted to do with us, that he wanted, that he ain't used to be a part of with us type of thing. So it made me and Fredo relationship got closer. And you guys both decided to start your own record labels. Oh, uh, yeah. Right, uh, Truly Mafia, uh -huh. right? And he had his own. Yeah. Did you guys ever sign anybody or were these just basically for you guys? N me personally, my situation, I did it more so for just me. My situation, just like I said, it was just to make sure my situation can be right. You know what I'm saying? But I know Fredo had his situation to where he had a few artists, I, I believe. He had a few artists over there, over whatever. But me personally, I did my, my situation was just to, you know what I'm saying, just for me type of thing to build up my own team to help produce my work. You know what I'm saying? And if I say if I, you know what I'm saying, if, if I get time to deal with another artist down the line type of thing, I wouldn't mind it, you know what I'm saying? Because I love to see people who got them and shine type. So I wouldn't mind if I could help another artist's career. But as far as it being a focus for me, I'd be too focused on myself. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. So you're staying with Fredo. How long did you guys stay with each other? Um, uh, shit. Me and Fredo stayed together. Shit, for we moved. They had like two careers together. Shit, we be on the lines in like a few years. So you guys was working? No, nah, yeah, that's why I say me and Fredo became real tight because we stayed together before. We was, we stayed with each other for a few years. Like, because Keith always was like on, like you say, he got locked up a lot of times. He got locked up, so he always was on probation or house arrest or something like that. So me and Fredo, like I say, built the bond just by the fact that me and Keith not being around each other so much. So like I say, Keith always on house arrest or at the crib and I'm not sitting in no crib, you know what I'm saying, at the time. I wasn't trying to sit in no crib all every day, all day. So, like I say, we used to be out. Like I say, our crib was more like the spot where all the guys would come kick it at, you know what I'm saying? Were you still seeing uh, Chief Keith around yeah. and everything? Like, yeah, we'll events. slide on him. Yeah, we'll slide on him, like I say, every once in a while, we'll slide on him. Like I say, you on house arrest or whatever, we'll slide on him or he'll pop up over there when he get movement and some shit like that. Okay. At this point, you're, you're getting millions of views. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have a pretty good rap career, you know, but it seems like you still end up kind of falling back from the music. Yeah, because me personally, I had a lot of personal things going on. Like, for for one, I, I end up, at this point in time, I end up getting custody of two of my kids, two of my, two of my daughters. So I had to fall back and actually focus on being a father at one point. So it was like, not that I stopped making music, but I had to focus on my family at a point and really buckle down and make sure. Cause at the at the time you gotta think, my the lifestyle I'm living one, and it ain't one acceptable for me to be raising no little girls around type of thing. So I had to really settle down and strap my mind about focusing on how to raise two, you know what I'm saying? Two little girls. So for me, it was one of them type of things, just trying to get my personal life together. Cause I was moved, so I was, cause I was so young doing everything. Like I was fucking 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? Living a life like I'm 40 at fucking 13, 14. You know what I'm saying? So shit, I had to buckle down and start handling a lot of personal things. So shit, now I just, like I say, just getting cleared up with a lot of that and being able to get back to work like I usually can. You know, as you're doing all this, I take it you're kind of off doing your family thing. And, uh, you know, in 2018, Fredo passes away. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that was shocking. I... What was that like? It was shocking. 
that hit my mind and made me think different. You know what I'm saying? Just not necessarily just about the way I do things, just just life. But like I said, it started like you just start losing people that was too close to you. You know what I'm saying? So it started making you feel just you start being just thinking about yourself more. Like I say you start losing people that that's close to you that you want to think. Like I say, you you so far doing this and doing that, you want to think certain things that happen still. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, it was a fucked up moment. How did you find out about it? How did I find out? Well, personally, I know a lot of people hit me up and told me. Like when it happened, a lot of people hit my phone up and told me what went on. That I, that's one thing. Then of course the internet. You know what I'm saying? The shit went viral on the internet too, but. Before that, a lot of, like I said, a lot of folks that we know personally contacted me and just told me what was going on and told me what was up. But I didn't go to the funeral. I didn't, I didn't go to the funeral. Is there a reason why you didn't go? I won't say it was necessarily no reason, but me personally, I don't, I don't really like funerals. I'm not the funeral type of guy. And then like, I lost a lot of, a lot of people I know. So it's like. I, I felt like I won't want to be, what's the, what's the word I'm looking, showing favoritism, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of other folks' funerals that I didn't make it to, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of other folks' funerals I miss, and not purposely, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, shit. So it was one of them things where it was like, all right, he know, you know what I'm saying, how my feelings for him. He know the situation, the relationship that we in. So like, I don't have to go there to, you know what I'm saying, to show Folks, other folks that me and him got a good relationship with each other or to show my support or respect, I should say. So I really, I just didn't go. Do you wish you would've went now, looking back mm. on it? No? Mm -mm. No. Like, I won't want to see my homie like that. Yeah. So you've just never been the type to like any funerals at all? Yeah, like, see, I've been, like I said, I've been in the streets since Shorty. Since, like, like I say, I've been seeing people have been dying around me since I was, what, nine, ten. So for me, I've been going to funerals ever since I was able to hang outside. And that's what, fifth grade, sixth grade, stuff like that, seventh grade, especially in my eighth grade, yeah. Things like them years, like, yeah, my, like my last grad in my grammar school year, yeah, like it was a lot of, it was certain funerals that I went to that, like I said, it just made me like feel like I don't, you know what I'm saying, I can't do funerals. <laughs> I don't even go to my own family, my own family funerals. Like my grandma just passed, I didn't go to her funeral. You know what I'm saying, and she played a big part of my life. Not my granny that I stayed with, but my granny on my mother's side, she passed away and I didn't even go to her funerals. So it was like, it ain't no just, the hood thing or no, you know what I'm saying, street thing with my homies is more so just personal thing with me. I don't like funerals. So I don't go to no funerals. No. Like, I wouldn't even care if somebody came to mind. I don't even want a funeral. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't even okay. want a funeral. Well, so at, least, at least you're, uh, you know, Cremate me and give me it, to my kids, you know, man. Don't even throw you a funeral. Wow. No, I, I tell my wife all the time, Cremate me and Give me my kids, you know, give my address to my kids, and they can do whatever they want to do with them. Rather they keep hold to them or whatever. Shit. Ain't no point to me letting my body sit here and get, get old anyway. She gonna get ate up anyway. So, see, I might as well burn it up. And, you know what I'm saying? And give my ashes to my kids versus them coming to a grave site thinking they, you know what I'm saying? feeling like they with me, they can actually have me with them for real. Versus going to a front of, you know what I mean? A grave site, a graveyard type of thing. I hear you, I hear you. Do you have a favorite memory with Fredo Santana you can share? A favorite? A favorite? Yeah. Oh um, man, like I say, I don't know, we used to do a lot of funny ass shit. <laughs> you know, so I can't really tell you one time, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. We did so much shit together to where, like, I'd be going on days about telling you about shit that we did. But like I said, it'd be, we always did shit, like, 
from partying to like we party. We we used to party and type of motherfuckers. Like I said, I dropped out of school my sophomore year. You know what I'm saying? Going to my junior year. So like shit, we yeah, I think I never went to school. I was, I didn't go to college, none of that shit. So my partying is life. Shit was an everyday thing for me. You know what I'm saying? Partying was an everyday thing. And then they necessarily partying, you know what I'm saying? But shit, you free living, you know what I'm saying? You young, you don't got bills and you don't got things like that to pay because you stay, you know what I'm saying, with somebody or you out on the streets, roaming from your homie crib to his homie crib. Like if like for me personally, I used to live in my grandma crib, but I also used to, there been times to where, like I said, I didn't have a crib to where I'd probably be just sleeping on the block and trap spots that, you know what I'm saying, little spots that was on the block that we had, staying there, having some of the guys to fuck around and stay there too, just because they know a nigga ain't got nowhere to go. Like, that type of shit, them type of moments, hell yeah. But like, we had moments like that, like I say, shit. Like I say, the times where, like I say, nigga, guys don't have careers to go to. You know what I'm saying, where we had to stay at, at an empty ass career, random ass trap house or something, just to sleep, you know what I'm saying? And, type of thing.